Associate Trade Justice Organizers, and she's going to talk about what folks, ha folks have been doing to hold members of Congress accountable to their constituents on trade. So I was going to talk about um, how people are gauged and gauged by ISDS, especially how the ambulance chasers, who are the people that bet on the outcomes of ISDS. But I was just asked to talk about nursing. So my job as a nurse is to be a, a case manager. A case manager's job is to make sure that the insurance companies pay for the patient's hospital stay. This is a job that's really only in a capitalist system. If you had something like single payer health care, my job would not exist and I'd be at the bedside. I'd be taking, I, I do discharge planning, so then I would be doing some discharge planning, which is more like what I went to school for, not insurance, insurance issues. So I wanted, that's one piece of the nursing, my nursing background. The other thing is as a case manager, I'll have people that, um, Came to the hospital, oh, I was laid off two weeks ago, or I was laid off last month. I did have insurance. I had private insurance by my employer. I, I do. I thought I do. We look at the records. No, you don't. So now they're stuck because they were employed. I mean, and they were employed. Now they're not anymore. So that's one of the things that, you know, is really a good example of the effects of math. But I did want to talk about the ambulance chasers. So other speakers who have talked about ISIS. 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 <laughs> oh. So third party investors gamble on the outcome of the ISDS suits like ambulance chasers. And this is what bothers me the absolute most. So it's become a way for rich investors to make money by betting on lawsuits instead of on stocks and bonds. They win huge awards and as always, we pay the bill. Just like ambulance chasers, they agree to bankroll a lawsuit and take a portion of the cash if they win. Yeah. The industry is booming. ISDS firms actually send alerts to clients that say something like, oh, this country has passed a regulation that may interfere with profits. It's a good opportunity to sue. And since the corporations don't have to make the partnership public, and it is all done in relative secrecy, you can actually ask for enormous amounts of money and nobody can criticize you. Just to make it worse, often the best country for international investors is to sue one that's already in financial trouble, just to make that worse. I was also asked to talk about Greater Boston Trade Justice. We've been around for three years, three and a half years. We we're first no TPP Boston because that was our job, and thank you to everybody around the world. The TPP is now dead, so now we're working to improve NAFTA. So initially, our group focused on events where there would be likely be sympathetic audiences, like uh, marches and rallies, people leaving the theater of left-leaning films, etc. We hosted a forum and gave out lots and lots and lots of flyers with all the terrible provisions written on them of the TPP and always with directions, call your congressperson. Then two years ago, when a large percentage of that population was aware, and that would be all of you, about how, what the TPP is like and how we're appalled by it, we turned to groups of people that would be appalled by only one aspect. For example, we printed a flyer specifically about the effects on the medical community, and we handed them out uh, where almost where there's a lot of patients, where pretty much where everybody is, either a patient or a uh, medical person. So then we had flyers about the food issues with an irresistible picture of a baby, and we even um, sent a letter to all the churches and synagogues outlining the moral and the biblical impl implications. So last spring. We began to put in on the last wavering congressman in Massachusetts. He was Massachusetts Representative Seth Moulton of the North Shore. So we worked with the North Shore Bernies. Anybody here from North Shore Bernies? Thank you all very, very much. Sorry. So in July, we made a 10 foot by 6 foot highway banner that says bad j trade kills jobs, stop TPPs, or we can just change it now, stop NAFTA. 
And every Friday at rush hour, we hang it over a highway overpass. Um, that way to make sure that Moulton knew about it. Also, we faxed him a picture of this banner. Drop. We scout out and we dropped the banner over a highway near a town the day before that town had their parade. So we had flyers and people signed postcards at the same weekend, so just a little extra impact. We also visited his office. Then in October, in Salem, his, he's in Salem, we flyered wearing costumes and placed dozens of yard sales that asked him by name to oppose the TPP. Friday would put a flyer in every doorstep of his neighborhood, including his own house, so he would have to answer to his own neighbors. So in the end, he didn't have to vote because so many people all over the world did this sort of thing. And we will do that again for and after. Thank you. Liz is, Liz is being humble. Liz and others held the fires and ass of, of Representative Seth Moulton, who was getting calls from General Petraeus telling him he needed to vote for the TPP. And it's only because these people showed up in his neighborhood, left leaflets on his door and all his neighbor's door, that Seth Moulton never came out for the TPP. So that's what we've been doing around the country, and that's how we defeated the TPP.